25, Five Things You Need to Know About Marketing this week. My name is Roger Gallegos. I'm the founder and CEO of Beacon Marketing. This week, I'm going to be talking about uh, some marketing myths that you can begin to ignore. Uh, this is a topic that's important to me because these myths are something that I encounter pretty much on a daily basis when I'm talking to clients or potential clients, and uh, they really contribute to some poor decision making uh, amongst uh, some of my clients or some potential clients around uh, marketing. And so if we can begin to understand what these myths are and dispel them, then I feel we can all start making better decisions and we can all get better, a little bit better at marketing our business. Now, uh, in research of this topic, there were so many of these little myths that I want to touch on. I was actually able to do some, a blog and a video uh, with some different talking points. So this video covers five points that I'll be talking about. And I actually wrote a blog with seven more. So in total, there's 12 of these myths that you can feel, feel free to ignore. But it'll be broken up between this video and a blog. I'll put a link to the blog in the description uh, for the video so you can make sure to uh, check those out. But I just want to cover these five additional points here. Uh, then in no particular order, just some points that I thought you might want to consider and that they really start thinking about, especially if you uh, subscribe or heard one of these things, you can begin to ignore them or forget them because they're just not applicable, don't ring true. So uh, without much further ado, let's get into it. So uh, the first one is a common one uh, is marketing and advertising are the same thing. Now, marketing is the act of promoting your business through uh, communication and reaching out to your clients. Advertising is a, is a specific act of marketing. It's when you pay to have your message seen on a particular platform like Google or Facebook or YouTube or on TV. So uh, they're not really the same thing. It's kind of this, uh, uh, the feeling is uh, uh, you have five fingers, a thumb is a finger. So all thumbs are fingers, but not all fingers are thumbs. It's kind of the same principle there. So the, when you begin to use the terminology, you say, I may not need to do advertising, but that's because your marketing is so so good. So the way I kind of look at it is advertising is really some paid media. So you may not need paid media because if you have a good marketing plan and your organic outreach is so good, you may not need paid advertising. And that's great. That, that's probably the best place to be. So uh, that's one place you can start uh, clearing up marketing, advertising, not the same thing uh, advertising is a subset of marketing. Uh, the next thing, uh, and I hear this all the time, uh, it's the idea of it worked for them, so it will work for us. And I see this a lot with uh, big companies. Well, well, I see Apple doing this, or, or uh, this company does this, so we should do it, or my competitor is doing this. And while it's nice to learn and maybe crib from other uh, businesses, successful businesses, don't just assume that you're going to have the same results. There's a lot of different things, a lot of factors that go into success. And you have to understand exactly what those contributing factors are. So it, go in and say, I want to do something similar to this. And let's see how can it apply to our situation. Because there's really rarely going to be able to just carbon copy a practice or a policy onto your business and have it work as effective as it is for another one because there's too many variables that go into a successful marketing campaign or marketing strategy to say it's just going to work uh, by just copying and pasting. You have to understand everything that goes into it. So it's okay to uh, learn and take lessons from other businesses, uh, so specifically successful ones, but don't just think that you're going to copy and expect the same success because that's just not going to happen. Um, next one is um, my product will sell itself. Now, uh, this is uh, something you hear a lot it is, hey, I have such a great product. It will sell itself. I don't need to go out there and market my business. And it's great. If you feel you have a product or service that's excellent, good for you. You have done a great job at creating a unique value proposition that will that draws attention. But in our fractured media uh, landscape and with people being so busy, so constantly doing everything, uh, a thousand things at once, if you do not find a way to get your product or get your service in front of people's eyes and have them understand why you could help 
address and solve their pain points and pain points is something I've talked about in previous videos, you are going to be ignored. People are not going to see you because it doesn't matter how good your service is. If no one knows about it, you're just not going to sell it. So don't think that a good product as great as important that is, that the great product or service will sell itself if you're not doing something to go out there and promote it. So you have to find a way to get your messaging in front of people, and that's what marketing is all about. So don't think your product will sell itself if you're not out there doing the work to uh, get, get it in front of eyeballs. So you do need to market yourself. Uh, the next one, and I hear this a lot, is, and there's a couple forms of it, but I'll use one form. I use social media, therefore I don't need a website or email. Now you could kind of use the different ones where I, uh, I use, I have a website so I don't need social media or email or I have email so I don't need the other two. Whatever the combination is, whatever, however you finish that sentence, uh, you do need a mix. And I've talked about this. I talked about your marketing mix in where you have to have uh, a multi-pronged approach to get people's attention. Uh, just a second ago, I talked about the fractured media landscape. And the reason that plays in a, a factor of this is we all get our information in different ways. And so if you're able to, your audience probably gets their information in different ways. So if you're able to touch them on their website, on a website or through social media or through their email inbox and hopefully in multiple places, then you're able to get a, a, a large, make a larger impact. You're able to reach more people. So don't think just because you have a website that you don't need social media or that just because you're on social media that you don't need email marketing. You could probably get away with doing two of the three. Preferably you want all three. And so you're able to build and uh, get exponential growth from the from the three and you can kind of use them to amplify your message and do different things. Uh, that's what I try doing. That's what I like to recommend for my clients. Uh, but don't, you know, you have to have some sort of mix, at least two of the three, so you can execute a plan so you can have this way of building your message and amplifying it. So it just, you know, keep in mind, if you're using one, try to use something else. Don't just settle on one. Uh, the last one is, and it's kind of an offset of what we just talked about. Uh, social media is not for my industry. I hear this all the time, and this cannot be further from the truth. Look, there are so many uh, social media platforms out there. We know the big ones, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter. Just because your industry may not be right for one of those ones, there's a chance that uh, it, it, you're, you're going to be somewhere. Uh, LinkedIn, if nothing else, you should be on LinkedIn because LinkedIn is a place for professionals to connect. And you should be on there sharing your ideas, connecting with people, making professional connections because you don't know, you never know where somebody may know someone that they can recommend you. And they can recommend your business, recommend your services. So if nothing else, you should be active on social media. Uh, if you sell to consumers, you should have a Facebook page. Just have it up there. Maybe do updates, freak, not, not frequently, maybe do it even update uh, once or twice uh, a week just so you have a chance for people to see it. Because if people, people forget that, that places like Facebook, Twitter, uh, even YouTube, those uh, functionally act as search engines. People put information in there and they use them to search. So if they search for something and they find your website, you never know what that could be. And, and it could be just one client or two clients away from really making a difference in your business. So uh, if you don't think that your business uh, is applicable for, for social media, I would think again because you could have an impact, especially if you get creative and think of new ways how you could do that. You might be able to corner the market or start really taking advantage because if you're the sole voice on that platform or on that uh, in social media, you could really have an audience to yourself and uh, as a marketer, you could, that that uh, is so valuable. So the uh, recap, the five myths that I want you to start ignoring, uh, marketing and advertising are the same thing. It worked for them, so it'll work for us. My product will sell itself. If I use social media or website or email, I don't need something else. Uh, and last one is social media is not for my industry. Those are all myths that you can feel free to avoid. Uh, also remember that I uh, wrote a blog where I go detail some other myths. So please check that out. I'll put a link in the description for this video. As always, please like, share, uh, comment. I want to hear from you. What myths are out there that you've heard that you have questions about or that maybe you held on to for a little bit too long or that you just recently forgotten? Um, 
As always, I, I offer a free 30-minute discovery session. This discovery session is meant to help you understand where you are with your current marketing efforts and help you understand how you can move forward so you can use effective and efficient marketing practices to grow your business. So uh, I offer that uh, 10 free sessions uh, a month. So if you want to get one of those, it's a $97 value. I'll put a link to uh, where you can schedule your free session. After that, I do charge. But after the 10, I, I should say, I do charge. Uh, so please get out that ASAP. Um, I also offer, uh, uh, do a free month, oh, sorry, free weekly newsletter. I send it out on Monday afternoons. It's just some good information to help you get started and how you can think about marketing that week. So you could uh, start planning ideas or even for the next week or the next month, you can start thinking about how you can better promote your business. So uh, some good information in that marketing newsletter. It's a free newsletter. I don't uh, send out spam or anything like that once a week with some maybe some additional stuff for my local audience. Uh, so if you're interested, please sign up for that. Again, my name is Roger Gallegos. This has been uh, Beacon Marketing's Weekly Five, Five Things You Can uh, Use for Marketing. Um, I'll be back next week with next week Weekly Five. Uh, again, look forward to hearing from you. You have a great week. Thank you for tuning in. Bye.